Welcome to today's edition of HM Car Reviews. Today we have the Hyundai i40. We've already filmed an i30, we've already filmed an Ionic, but it's the i40's turn today. We're going to start off with the exterior of the vehicle, just as we normally do, before we go on to the interior, have a look at the performance as well afterwards. We'll start to look at the LED running lights that you can see up here. These do come standard on this particular car, the SE model of the i40. We also got running down the side of the vehicle tinted windows on the back. That was actually an optional extra that has been fitted into this car. Uh, this alloy wheels, they're not the greatest alloy wheels in my opinion, but they look fine on the car and you've got quite a lot of tyre wall as well. Makes for a more, much more comfortable ride. If we continue around the back as well, we can see on the very top we got our shark fin. That's for the DAB radio. That makes the radio much more crisp and easier to hear. Staying with the back as we make our way down here, we open up the boot. Sadly, it's not electric. Well, it's not automatic anyway. You can't use your foot thing and there's no button up here to get it down. That is an optional extra. But looking at the boot, we can see how big it actually is. We remove this safety thing. You got a huge amount of boot space. I'll find out the, the exact liters later on. Uh, but we also got this power output that you also get that in an i30 as well. That's something that's been crossed over between the two vehicles. Looking in the boot space, you can get some extra space underneath. You may want to store something that you don't want people to be able to see too easily. That's there. You can also move the seats down. Pull this clip down, that releases it. If I then make my way over this way and get in the, on the inside, we can see the seats are down. So let's move the other side down too and gives you all of this extra amount of boot space. It's an incredibly large amount of boot space, but if you wanted even more boot space, you can unclip these and taking away the braces from the top gives you all of that extra space. But leaving them inside makes the car more solid and more planted. So you've got performance benefits having them in, but more cargo space for having them out. It's almost so big in the back of an i40 that it's like a bedroom. As you can see, I'm stretched all the way out. I could have some pillows in here, some duvets and go camping. It's absolutely amazing how much space you've got in here. You could almost put a TV in there. You probably could actually using utilizing the power output. Great for entertainment, great for camping, and great for little family holidays. Superb car. If you're enjoying this content so far, why don't you leave a like and subscribe? Now we've had a look at a boot, I think it's time that we shut it. Like I said, you don't have the button, you can get it fitted here. That is an optional extra. Otherwise, you just pull the handle down and shut it like that. We would then go into the back seats of the vehicle. We'll have a look down here. Quite often, well, particularly with a car like this, it's designed particularly for families and for transporting people about. You've got your huge boot space, but we'll take a look down here. You do have your electric windows here. They work automatic, it seems. And then up there, it just goes up as well. Uh, in the back, it's loads of space, actually. Very, very uh, huge amounts of space. Very, very comfortable. You've got your climate things down here and some mesh to store stuff. Not a huge amount of stuff and plenty of headroom. You also benefit from illumination with the light. You got loads and loads of space in the back. No one's gonna complain about being cramped and squished. You got loads, particularly with four people. And for extra sort of benefit, you've got your cup holders down here and a little bit of nice storage, storage facility. You can opt to get wireless charging. This particular car doesn't have it fitted but it is an optional extra if you wanted that anyway. So we'll move ourselves up to the very front of the car and we'll take a little look around here. The computer screen is a standard Hyundai Kia feature. It's pretty much in all of them that have their screen. Touch screen, of course, but you've got huge amounts of space down here. So much space, you can even put a phone or something in there. Huge amounts of space in there. If that's not enough, your cup holders are hidden down there. This one's an automatic. You also got a little bit more space down here as well. If you open up there, 
in that little slot you've got your power output you've got your usb and your auxiliary as well you know that stop start system that has it it's a little bit annoying cuts out in traffic but you've also got an electric handbrake if you click auto hold you pull up in traffic it will engage it for you just drive away just pull it in gear and then off you go dual heated seats wrong time of year for that at the moment because it's 22 degrees but you can get cooling seats and they would be fantastic in this weather traction control is also down there as well nice that they put it so close to the uh to the driving wheel so you if you wanted to have more fun you can boom press a button you're good to go if we also have a look at the system that they've got set up you've got dual zone climate control systems so you can have somebody being let's see how high we can get it so somebody on on the left side can have 30 degrees whereas i can be 15 degrees on on the right side amazing system i have no idea how it works it works like magic that's how it works you also have cruise control which makes drive traveling on the motorway really easy you just press it engage it off you go sorted sticking with the front seats you also got powered seats so let's see what the car is like to drive we'll slick it into the uh the manual mode and let the uh car change gear for us it can it's not that fast it really is not that fast but i don't think we expect it to be it's a uh it's a family car it's a family estate car it's, it's not fast at all it does move it does move it moves okay let's try and see how much um we get around this corner and have a look and it's miles per gallon it's not it's not that economical for a diesel i've been getting 40.5 which it's not that great, but maybe that's because it's a uh, it's an automatic. We'll go around this corner, and we'll do a zero to sixty run. We'll have a look and see how fast that is. One final time around this corner. There is no one around, so let's let's do that. Let's stop it. There we go. So go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight or nine seconds to get to 60. It's, it's not bad, actually. I've definitely driven slower cars than this before, but it weighs quite a bit and it's quite a lot of weight to log around. It's only a 1.6 liter engine, diesel, of course. It doesn't have huge amounts of power, 130 horsepower and 270 or so foot-pounds of torque. It's not going to propel you along like it would do as if it was a sports car. It's not a sports car. It handles okay for such a large car. It's mostly designed just for going down the highway, the motorway, that sort of stuff. So, you know, tight and twisty roads are really not its expertise. That's not what it's for. It's a family car and it's comfortable going along, cruising along, leaving the cruise control on and just letting it do its thing on the motorway. Let's put the cruise control on and we've got it set to 34 miles an hour and absolutely fine. One thing that's a little bit strange on it has got the, the flappy paddle gearboxes, which let's face it, for a car like this doesn't need them. But it has them anyway. And we might as well use them. Get some more power. And if you like that content, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and comment. It means a lot to me. And until next time, goodbye.